Hi, welcome to the series on Docker, Travis, and AWS. In this series, let us try to understand what is Docker, what is Travis, and what is AWS, and how to make use of these three in order to deploy an application. The first goal is to understand what are the different problems and how these three are solving those problems. So let us first try to understand what are the kind of problems Docker is able to solve. So imagine this scenario where in a firm, a developer wants to develop an application. Thus, she needs to install all the dependent software packages, libraries, modules, and use them to build the desired application. After the development, it is obvious that the app needs to be tested and deployed. When the dedicated teams are about to do this, it is often the case that the app fails to run smoothly on those different machines while it works perfectly fine on the machine on which it was initially developed. This may be due to several reasons. The absence of the required software pieces, dissimilar versions, or even the difference in the OS dependencies themselves. In this case, the testing and deployment teams have nothing to do but go through the hassle of installing all the necessary packages, modules, OS dependencies, etc., with an eye on their versions too. This is very tiresome and pesters anyone who wants to deal with the app for the following reasons. The packages or the versions you wish to install may not be always available. Even if they are, it is a tedious task to do it manually. And the second reason is sometimes the OS itself needs to be transferred for the proper functioning of the app, which is a heavy and hectic process. And what is the second problem? Even if we choose through going through the step of manual installation of the dependencies and software packages, it consumes a lot of time due to installation issues. For example, we need to download the installer, run it, and if at all we face any error, we need to troubleshoot that error and fix it. After fixing it, we need to reinstall, rerun the installer and another error may rise up. Now, we may get stuck in the infinite loop of troubleshooting and fixing the error, rerun the installer and another error and another error and another error. So what could be a solution? Well, one possible solution is using the virtual machines. According to Red Hat, the official virtual machine definition is, a virtual machine is a virtual environment that functions as a virtual computer system with its own CPU, memory, network interface, and storage created on a physical hardware system located off or on premises. Simply, a virtual machine is a virtual software environment, which gives us the feel of working in a separate computer with different OS dependencies and dedicated hardware. Simply, if you have a laptop with Kali Linux OS, but you are to work on an application using Ubuntu OS, we install a virtual machine software on our computer. While installing, we dedicate some part of the hardware like memory to it. Thus, it acts as if we are working on a separate computer or a separate machine with a whole new environment of OS and hardware resources on our own machine. Now, let us say you want to work on three kinds of applications which need Ubuntu, Debian, and Fedora OS respectively. This might compel you to install three virtual machines on your machine. For this, you need to install a hypervisor which monitors the working of virtual machines. So VMware defines a hypervisor officially like this. A hypervisor, also known as a virtual machine monitor, is a process that creates and runs virtual machines. A hypervisor allows one host computer to support multiple guest VMs by virtually sharing its resources like memory and processing. All this could make the concept of virtualization turn out to be a nightmare for the following reasons. The first one, virtual machines are heavy and each consumes dedicated amount of resources like RAM, memory, etc., thus causing wastage of resources. Secondly, the underlying host OS isn't used whose resources are also wasted. Thirdly, the problem of manual installation of software dependencies still persists. 
The concept of containerization is designed to address these drawbacks. A container engine such as Docker is to be installed on the machine. Docker is a container platform which could run multiple containers. The Docker engine, which is installed in the machine, could simply handle these apps which are containerized without having the need to install these virtual machines. Containerization thus allows the developer to package an application along with its dependencies and supporting software pieces and ship all them together as a single unit in the form of an image. This has the following advantages. It is lightweight and fast, and containers don't need to be allocated with the hardware resources like virtual machines because containers are just running instances of the images. Thus, as resources are not fixed and are used as per their need, there is no resource wastage. The concept of containerization, as discussed earlier, allows the developer to pack an application along with its dependencies and supporting software pieces and ship them all together as a single unit of uh, image. If this image could be viewed as an object, the container could be viewed as the running instance of an image. The idea of containerization is that the developer creates the image of the app with all the requirements of the app described in a file. This file is like a recipe describing the required dependencies, steps to construct the image, etc. The image thus constructed is used by the others like testing or operations teams to review the app. The team runs this image, which creates a container inside which the app runs. Now, why Docker? Well, Docker is a software tool which removes the hassle of installing dependencies manually. Also, Docker enables packaging of apps along with their dependencies, building images, running the containers, and it enables smooth functioning of the applications which depend on single or multiple containers. <laughs>